So you would come to this, how to complete your review, and you jump down to steps to complete your program and area review. All right, so step one, you're gonna download the template for your area. So academic services, student services, administrative services. Um, these are all up here in the electronic PAR templates. All of them are right here for download. Um, just a quick note about some potential issues with links in the template. When you download them, um, if you're working with them on your desktop, um, there's just some issues with clicking on the links that are in the template. All of the links are correct. They've been tested multiple times. So if you click on a link and you can't open it, we are very, very sorry, and we wish we could you know, get Microsoft to fix this. Um, but there's some sort of malware thing that's like stopping the link from opening. So just go ahead and copy paste that link, put it in the browser on your own, and then you'll be able to open it. Um, but there's just a bit of an issue with clicking directly from the template into some of the links. One way to solve that, um, if you are a Mac user, is to not use Safari, apparently. Um, we had some Mac users tell us this. Another way to solve it is if you upload it as a Google Doc, then most of the links appear to be clickable. But it's just, it's a bit of a link issue. The link is correct, but go ahead and copy, like actually copy the link and put it in your browser yourself, and then you should be able to open it. So just a quick note about that. All Cynthia, right. Can I say something about the, it, it, to address a question that came up earlier about templates? Sure. So an SAO is akin to a PLO. A service area outcome is akin to a program, uh, program learning outcome. When, some of you are in programs that have both SAOs and PLOs and SLOs. So just, so it's not confusing, an SLO is course specific. So if you have a, a offering a class in a Puente program, they will have their own SLOs, they will enter that data in Curriculinet. PSCN classes, they you will enter that data in Curriculinet. Just let those, that's the course academic side. If you go into Curriculinet, and try to assess PLOs for Puente, Daraja, uh, your PSN classes, any of the programs we talk about here, you can't because the PLOs in Curriculinet are all certificates and degrees. So uh, the, you should be using the service area outcomes template. So in the past, some of you have been using the academic services template. If you had a program that was kind of crossed between both sides of the house for lack of a better term but you if it's not a certificate or degree it's going to be a service area template and the service area outcome could actually in some cases be the same as your program learning outcomes if you also have certificate and degrees that are associated with your program That's it. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying, Bia. All right, so once you've downloaded the template, according to what Dion just said about which template you should download, um, step two, if you're working on your own, just save it to your desktop and go ahead and start working. You, you might want your dean or your manager, um, if you're not a dean or manager, to be able to see what you're doing as you go um, to get that feedback in real time. If so, um, then go ahead and do the step for if you're working in a team um, is to we're suggesting just upload the template into Google Docs um, and then share with the people on your PAR team so that everyone who's completing the PAR can all see in it and work together in real time. If you need a quick refresher on how to do this, there's a couple of links that explain that process. Um, I'm not going to go through those here for the, the sake of time, um, but there are instructions about how to upload so that you can work together with a team. Step three, check out the data. So links to the applicable data that's available from the Office of Institutional Research are included in the PAR templates. Um, you've also seen quite a bit during the SAO portion that Dr. Nalu showed you of all of this stuff on our website. Um, so there's lots and lots of data out there. It's just a question of connecting the data that you need to be able to see, you know, do a review of how your program's doing. If you need any additional data, um, I've mentioned this before, but it bears mentioning again. Um, we are asking that you use the research request form. There's a link to it here. There's also a link on our website um, as early as you can, uh, but by Friday, September 24th at the latest, um, so that we can try to turn around those data requests as quickly as we can so you have the data that you need to complete your PARS. 
So step four, you're just going to complete your answers to the PAR questions in the template and any of the applicable forms. Um, just a reminder that PAR is kind of the place where we are collecting what everyone else and all the different shared governance um, committees are doing on campus. So we don't write the faculty prioritization form. We don't write the classified prioritization form, but we're going to collect it in PAR and then give it back to that shared governance committee. So if you find that you're filling out some of these forms and you don't understand what to do, um, then these are the people that you can contact to get further understanding. So PAR doesn't know everything, um, but we can, if you forget, just we'll connect you with the, the right people. But if you're filling out the faculty prioritization form and it, it doesn't quite make sense to you, go ahead and contact VP Critcher. Um, now I'll add VP Cooks to this list and or the faculty president, Miguel Colon, and they can tell you about that. If you've got a question about classified prioritization, go ahead and contact President Heather Hernandez. So PAR is this place where we're getting everything together, but we're not in control or managing all of those forms. We're just gathering it and then giving it back to the shared governance um, committees and senates to do their work. Um, one tip that the, the SASE funding application, we are still working on getting the correct link for that. So if you've already downloaded a template, um, the link is incorrect. And as soon as we get it, uh, a correct one, we will update it. Um, so just check back every so often, or we can send out an email once it's um, posted with the correct link. We are working on that. Step five, your goal is to turn in your completed electronic PAR template to your area manager or dean with the associated forms no later than October 11th. How they want it, that's going to be up to the various deans and managers to tell you. Um, one way would be to just like share your Google Doc with them, and then they can see it, and then email them the forms, but check in with your dean or manager about how they want it. But the plan is, is for that electronic template, that first step to be done by October 11th. Um, step six, wait for your dean or manager to give you feedback. If you haven't heard anything by maybe October 22nd, you might want to reach out and check in and say, hey, do you have any feedback for me? Um, and then once you've gotten that go ahead, dean manager says, this is good, you're done, you're good to go with the, the, the PAR word template. One person who's been working on that, um, if you're a member of the team or who's ever working at it, one person needs to essentially copy paste what's in that template into Qualtrics. And that's what's going to allow that final step of PAR committee and the Office of Institutional Research to take a look at that data, to distribute that data to the various committees, um, to distribute resource requests, right? So the PAR, even though you finish that um, Word template and you turn it in by October 11th and you might feel like, whew, all done, don't kick back yet. You're not done until you enter that data into Qualtrics. And the due date for that is October 25th. 